There are growing tensions between the U.S. and Russia following the downing of an American drone earlier this week. That's right. And CBS News has learned the fighter pilots who took out that drone over the Black Sea were awarded by the Russian military for their actions. The Pentagon releasing this footage. You've likely seen it by now. It shows the incident on Tuesday. You'll see that uh, jet uh, release its fuel all over the drone. Now, Russia denies its plane ever actually touched the un unmanned aerial drone. Washington, though, refutes that, simply saying the Kremlin is lying. Retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Scott Kane joins us now. Colonel Kane has more than 3,400 hours of flight experience. He is also a foreign policy expert. Colonel Kane, welcome. We know uh, that the pilots were ordered were ordered to down this drone, which seems to change, uh, obviously, how this situation is going to be viewed by the U.S. government, uh, as opposed to the idea early on there was speculation that perhaps the pilot went rogue. Mm -hmm. So from a foreign policy standpoint, what do you expect to happen next? Well, I mean, the, the, uh, the fact that they, they were ordered to, uh, to down the MQ-9 Reaper means that, that th this was a calculated... Um, set of actions by the Russian government. And what I mean by that is that if you think back over the past 10, 12 years, they have been slowly escalating what they what they believe they can get away with to see how we, he, we're going to respond um, or retaliate. And, you know, you think through the actions when they, they supported eastern Ukraine, then they took Crimea, then, you know, when we didn't uh, – uh, do anything in Syria when the the uh, red line was crossed. These things uh, send a message to Moscow that uh, the United States is not really going to retaliate and or um, respond in kind to any kind of um, gesture on this part. And, and the really interesting part of this, I believe, is that the 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 threat of nuclear war appears to be what they understand to be our red line in the United States. So anytime that we, you know, when there's something that we do, they, they threat nuclear war and then we back off. So we don't actually ever respond and they keep upping the ante. So I, I believe this is just one more step along the way for us to, to uh, see the Russians up the ante towards um, you know, potentially uh, taking you know, more ground in different countries. It's interesting, Colonel Kane, as you talk about the steps that Russia has taken, because you could go far, as far back as when Russia invaded Georgia, right, and rolled into that sovereign country before it rolled into Crimea, before we ended up where we are now. But from your experience, how risky was this maneuver? Because the pilot um, would have had to have put themselves at risk by coming this close with a drone, and that risk, Russia willing to take that risk, tells us what? Well, the, uh, you know, from the, the layman's perspective, it looks very risky, and, and frankly, if they hit the propeller, which it looks like they did, they, they probably got a little too close. Uh, you could certainly uh, crash yourself if, you're, if you hit another airplane. Um, with that said, you know, flying close to another airplane is something military pilots are taught to do all the time. Hmm. And uh, the, dr the drone or the MQ-9 is is not moving or maneuvering away from the other fighter. So when you're taught to dogfight, you're you're taught to respond to an airplane that's pulling nine Gs in a different direction. This one's pulling one G and it's just standing still. So the simple fact is, is that they felt very comfortable getting really close to that airplane. It looks like they'd got closer and closer, dumping fuel on it. And, and my guess is the pilots were trying to either use their jet wash or the fuel to disrupt the flight of the of the MQ-9 Reaper. Mm -hmm. And they just got a little too close and, and clipped the, the propeller. And that's ultimately what brought it down. So, uh, Colonel, Slovakia and Poland say that they will begin sending fighter jets to Ukraine. Based on your experience, I wonder how long you think it will take for Ukraine to get pilots trained, and what kind of a difference do you think that will make in the conflict? The uh, them some sending airplanes that are light kind is is actually pretty helpful. Uh, the uh, Ukrainians are a former Soviet uh, country; they've got you know MiGs and, and uh, Sukhoi aircraft, so so they are used to. Russian-style aircraft, and if they're if they're very the same variety of a Su-27 or a MiG-29 that they have, then it's not much of a transition. There may be a few switches or whatnot, or in different places 
or uh, you know, the, or you know, things that are just uh, you know, kind of like getting in a different car. You kind of very rapidly figure it out, and then you can move on from there. Um, the the challenge in that regard will be whether or not these aircraft are fully operational and capable to do the mission. Um, any airplane that that you add to their inventory essentially gives them spares in their front line of, of fighters that they would fly on a daily basis. So, you know, as a former fighter squadron commander, if you gave me, you know, six more airplanes, I'd love it because I've got more airplanes to rotate through my my inventory. And uh, as long as they're they're up to speed, that's, you know, that's a, a big win. Um, there's a difference between us giving F-16s and a former Soviet country giving MiGs or Sukhois, and, and that would be a complete animal. Interesting. Uh, it's so helpful to have your perspective. Colonel yeah. Scott Kane. Colonel, thanks so much. Thank you, Colonel. A pleasure. Thank you.